Today I'm going to share with you how to turn your portrait into an illustration with just one filter in Photoshop. Yes, you heard it right. No tracing with pen tool for hours, none of that. So without any further ado, let's get started. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Wacom Tablets. When creating effects like these, at times we need to make precise selections or use brushes extensively. A Wacom Tablet gives you the flexibility to draw them as you would naturally. You see, moving a pen on a surface is always way more precise than moving your entire palm with the mouse, right? On top of that, the ability to control the size of the brush with the pressure in your hand makes it all worthwhile. And we're going to use this in creating highlights for this effect. If you wish to check out the Wacom tablet I personally use and recommend, please check the link in the description. Let's get back to the tutorial. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and here you have your magical single and handsome portrait and if you wish to download him, check the link in the description. The first step is applying the cut out filter but in phases. First of all, press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy of the background layer or the subject layer. Make sure the subject layer is selected and let's name this cut out. Now convert this into a smart object why so that we can change the values of the filter later let's go to filter and then convert for smart filters hit ok besides having the advantage of going back and changing the values later you also have the advantage to copy filters from one smart object layer to the other so let's go to filter and then filter gallery but this is grayed out you know why because this image is 16 bit some filters just work with 8 bit come on adobe what are you doing it's 2020 to convert to 8 bit go to image mode and inside of that choose 8 bit now let's try again go to filter and then filter gallery see it's working now so inside the artistic tab right there you will find cut out just select that the first slider controls how many levels of colors there would be so if we take it all the way to the left as you can see there are just two or three colors very less number of colors and if we take it to the right the levels the number of colors increase and therefore the details increase. You can play with this value and choose what works best for you but stick with it through this example. So for this example, let's go all the way to the right hand side. We might modify that later but for now, let's keep it that way. Also, we want the least fidelity. So if we take this all the way to the right, you will see a lot of fine lines and crevices in there. We don't want any of that. Let's take it all the way to the left. The lines are now smoother. Now edge simplicity is the main game right there. The more you have it, the more simple the edges would be. And that's what we are going for in this example. So here is the trick. For the first level of detail, don't focus on the details of the face. Maybe the outside, maybe the shirt, that's it. And choose the value so that you can get away with the least amount of details and still looking great. Slowly and gradually decrease the edge simplicity. Just when you begin to see enough details, we'll stop. Now let's control the number of levels. Now keep in mind we have to stick with this value. So these are my final values. Number of levels 7, edge simplicity 7 and fidelity to the lowest. Hit OK. So there we have our first level and we can name this cutout 1. Now let's make a copy of this by pressing Ctrl or Command J and we can name this cutout 2. Now in this level we will have a little more detail. The great thing is we don't have to add the effect all over again. All we have to do is to double click on the smart filter right there and we can change the values right from here. And in here, the only thing which we have to worry about is the edge simplicity. We will go just a level lower. So the previous value was seven. We are just going to six. Hit OK. Now in here, just create a negative mask by holding the Alt key or the Option key click on the mask button, take the brush, now you know what to do. Just only paint over the areas where you want more details with white. So with the soft round brush selected, white as the foreground color, just start painting. If you think you have painted in the wrong area, no problem. Press X to make the foreground color black. If the foreground and the background are black and white, X just switches the foreground and the background and then paint it back with black. Now let's resume painting with white. By the way, if you momentarily want to check how the detailed cutout looks like, you can always hold the shift key and click on the mask button to momentarily turn it off. Hold the shift key and click on the mask button again to turn it back on. Now let's paint.
I think we have covered most of the important areas. Now time for level 3. So we can again copy level 1 by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Select that and then copy it. Place it at the very top. I'm not copying level 2 to level 3 because it already has a mask and then it'll just increase steps. Now create a negative mask again. Hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click on the mask. And in this one, decrease the value even further. Let's double click on the filter gallery. The previous one was 6 and in this one we're gonna go 5. Hit OK. You can always see the preview by holding the Shift key and clicking on the mask. See where you need more details and then paint accordingly. Hold the Shift key again, click on the mask and I'm gonna take back the brush. White as the foreground color. Make sure mask is selected and start painting. So this my friend was level 3. If you want level 4, you can also do that. Just one last. Now make sure to name it properly. So with the cutout one selected control or command J and we're gonna take it to the very top. Double click on the filter gallery. Let's choose the value 4. Hit OK. Again, create a negative mask by holding the Alt key or the Option key. Click on the mask button and start painting. This completes step 1. For organization purposes, you can always group all of these cutouts. So with the first cutout layer selected, actually that is cutout level 4, hold the Shift key and select the last one. All of them will be selected. Press Ctrl or Command G to group them. And let's name this Cutout Effect. The next step is an exciting step and that is painting in to correct the color. Now you can totally skip this step. It's not necessary. But if you want to make your illustration stand out with simplicity, this is a must. And it's very simple. All you have to do is to create a brand new layer. You can also do this over multiple layers. Zoom in and just simplify this. So with a hard round brush selected, all right, you can just sample this color and then simplify it. In this case, I'll just make it straight. Similarly with this one, we can go something like this. So all you have to do is to continue painting to simplify the shading. You don't have to do a lot, just a little bit would do as well. If you need a little more assistance, you can always increase the smoothing. So I'm gonna set it to 10. By the way, if you're confused about how to take a sample, just hold the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample. And if it's not taking a sample for you, make sure you go to the eyedropper tool and make sure sample all layers or current and below is selected so that it not only samples from the current layer, but also the layers which are beneath it. Let's get back to the brush and start painting. This area is a little too square, so let's quickly fix that, not make it absolutely square. One more line here, and it looks bearable. And here is the before, here is the after. Just a little more smoothness. So this step was paint correction. Let's name the layer or organization. Stay organized always. Moving on to step number three, and this is an exciting one, and that is painting in the highlights and the shadows. Now, in your example, you might just have to paint the shadows or just the highlights. Similarly, in this example, I'm just painting the highlights, maybe a little bit of shadows, but mostly highlights. Let's create a brand new layer and let's name this highlights. Now let's take a hard around pressure size brush. So we wanna choose a brush that is hard, but we can change its size with pen pressure. Let's go ahead and choose that. The advantage here is when you start painting in the highlights, so let's go ahead and choose the color white right here. You can also press D to set the background and the foreground to defaults, which is black and white. Let's set it to white and let's start painting. Now I'm gonna increase the smoothness. I want some assistance. So let's start right there. See the highlights that we are painting are looking so nice right? So we can continue with that. By the way, this is where caps lock is useful. When you're using a Wacom tablet and you want to see where the brush exactly would be pointed, you can press the caps lock key. The whole circle thing will go away. It'll change into a crosshair. Thus, it will give you an exact position of the brush.
Now, as you can see, I've painted a little bit of the highlights right there, very fast brush stroke, but there's a problem with that. It just doesn't look right. You know why? The color might be the issue. So let's create a solid color adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color and choose any color, maybe a little off white, hit OK. And we want to limit it just to the highlights. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the line between these two layers, and then you can pick a color for the highlight. So double click on this, and then with the eyedropper, we can pick the brightest color right there so that it matches the best. Hit OK. Now it looks bearable. I would make the line a little thinner at the top. So with the highlights layer selected, you can create a mask and then with the brush, you can just make the line a little thinner right there. Now, if you want, you can also do some shadows. So I'm gonna create a brand new layer. And in this, I know what color already to take. So I'm just gonna sample this darkest color and just do some simple shadows with a hard round pressure size brush. Just a little bit of definition around the nose. Maybe give a little more definition here as well. Now moving on to the final step, step number four, and that is just simply finishing touches. If you want it black and white, we can turn it black and white. If you want to add a duo tone effect, we can add that as well. Or if you want to add contrast or color grading, you're welcome to do that as well. No Piximperfect tutorial is complete without curves. So let's click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. I'm just gonna increase the contrast right over there by taking the slider on the right to the left and taking the slider on the left a little bit towards the right. Then you can also create a curve on top of that. I think the contrast is too much, so let's decrease the opacity and slowly and gradually increase it to a number which looks good to you. You're gonna keep it at about 50 and there you have it, just a little bit more contrast. Now on top of that, if you want to add a duo tone effect, you can do that by adding a gradient map. Add a gradient from black to white to turn it black and white or you can also choose some other gradients. So I can choose some interesting gradients like these to create a duotone effect as well. These are also very, very interesting. I actually downloaded these super cool presets somewhere on the internet. I don't remember it, I'm so sorry, but I'll link it up somewhere in the video right here or in the description. So do keep an eye out for that. Once you're satisfied with your gradient, hit okay. So you can have any version that you like, full color, black and white, or a duotone. You can also get creative and change the background. The stage is yours, my friend. So that's how to create an illustration with just one filter. And the filter here was cut out. And all you have to do is to apply that one filter again and again in different levels. So for some areas like the jacket, you would have less details. And for the other areas like the eyes, you would have more details in that filter. And after that, you can paint to correct the color, paint in the highlights and shadows if you want, and then you can just do some color grading or add a duotone effect like this or do a black and white version. That's up to you. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix and Perfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.